So this will be a video on how to completely diagnose and repair your clipper lighters. So as you can see, the one on this side is working every time. This was recently fixed. This side is not working at all. So first thing you want to do, start with the easiest option. Do you have flint? Is it sparking at all? If it's not sparking, then you're out of flint. Pretty simple. I'll show you how to change the flint. So you pull out your striker like that. And you want to take some pliers, needle nose, something, and you just want to unscrew the bottom portion. You can use a flathead, I find hit and miss results with that. You want to pull out the spring, tap out the flint. So this one still has a fair amount of flint in it. So it's not the flint. Another option or another issue it could be is a weak spring. So what you want to do is hold just past the bottom portion, the screwy portion of the striker and the top, you just want to lengthen the spring. Just pull it a little bit and you want to deform it. So you want it to be longer when you're done. Just like a little bit. So you can see where I was holding it's a lot more compressed. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that though. Yeah, so this side is a lot more compressed than the center. I'm gonna actually pull this out just a little bit more. And then another option it could be, before I throw back on the flint, is a dirty striker. So, you can notice this side has nice clean teeth. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but this side does not. It's full of resin from poking and prodding and whatnot. It's disgusting. So what you want to do is take some isopropyl alcohol. I'm using 99%. Anything 70% and higher will work. Or any alcohol for that matter. Ethanol, vodka, what have you. And you just want to wipe down this striker. This one's somewhat clean, but you can still see some nasty coming off of it. And you don't want to go in this direction, rather you want to go side to side, because that's the direction, if you're going back and forth, you're just going to chew up your Q-tip. And you won't clean out the grooves. You want to go to around a couple of times. I'm doing this without the flint in it, it's just a little easier. Not that there's a huge risk in sparking up and burning yourself since there's just so little uh, ISO being used. You can easily blow it out. But yeah, you can see it's nasty that came off of it. I'm going to throw back in the flint. And then pop in the spring. Now I have these locking tweezers that make it a little easier. And when you lengthen the spring, it will be harder to push it in, obviously. So, tweezers are really recommended. Needle nose, pliers, what have you, I would not recommend using your teeth. Teeth are expensive to repair. Tweezers are cheap. And you just want to thread it back in. A lot of people saying flipping the flint will work. That will work for a while and then there will become a divot in it again and you'll have to flip it another time. So you can see now it's sparking a lot larger compared to this one that was recently serviced. It's about the same. So you can see this one's striking every time. We'll see if this one starts striking every time. Okay it is. So that is the most basic issue that you'll run up against is a weak spring, lack of flint, or a dirty striker. I'll show you another thing that can be. Um, so this nozzle right here, it can get dirty. So what you can do, this was recently from cleaning another one, take that same ISO, dip your Q-tip, and then clean the nozzle area. Sometimes nasty gets in that nozzle and you just want to wipe it off until it comes clean, twist it around a little bit, you'll notice a lot of nasty comes off of that. So dirty nozzle is probably third or fourth most common issue. 
And lastly, this nozzle can loosen up. So how you fix that is you take some tweezers and you want to rotate it clockwise if you're facing it from downwards or looking down on it. You just want to turn it about quarter, half, maybe a full revolution. Depends on how far it is, but it will stop and it won't go any further. That's when you know it's completely tight. And all I'm doing is taking my tweezers and just doing the nozzle, not the black lever arm, just the nozzle. Now that ISO is probably flashed off, so you can now see that this sparks every time. So, to recap, striker might be dirty, flint might be out, spring might be weak, nozzle, will, nozzle, nozzle might be dirty or loose. Now, a little piece of advice, if you're buying clippers, get the ones with the brass inserts. I'll try and, so you can see the one on this side does not have a brass insert, and this one does. In my experience, the one without the brass insert will fail more commonly. So that means that the seal will break, it'll shoot out butane, and it'll be toast. The brass ones tend to not do that. Of course, these are refillable. Uh, you don't want to use like a big can of butane. It might overpressurize it and might uh, start sending out butane and might lock it open, etc. Uh, you want to kind of use a smaller can of butane. Um, lastly, if your flint runs out, Clipper does sell replacement flint. I have better results with Zippo brand. They seem to be a little bit more reliable and a little larger. Sometimes you get faulty flints in these. Easy enough, replace them, it'll be fixed right after. Otherwise, I hope that helps you and you can re resurrect some of your clippers from the grave. Some of them are too far to be gone. You know, they are $2.50. They aren't gonna have an infinite lifespan, but at least you'll get maybe two, three, four, five times the amount of life out of them.